to sell a online services. Thank God, in spite of MCO, we still be able to worship Him together, although it's just virtual. So please come and join us to worship Him this morning. With me, Rose on keyboard, Safina on bass guitar, and I'm Maravik. And I'm leading the worship. So let us worship you.
bless your name, God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Lord, in time like this, we have the Lord. Help us to become. You are in control of every situation, God, oh Lord. Help us to put our faith and our trust in you, oh Lord, oh God. You are the master of the wind. We believe that you will be with us in our storms. Give us patience to be still in you.
You say to God, be still and know that I am God. Yes, Lord. Lord, be just still in you. For in you, God, we will have peace. And you are our hiding place, oh God. So we will just trust in you, oh God, Lord, no matter what. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you, church, for joining us today. And stay tuned for the Word of God by Reverend Christopher Mann. God bless you all. Be safe. You know, I want to share this morning on I can be an overcomer. I can be an overcomer in Christ. You know, and uh, I can be an overcomer in Christ. A lot of times we find that life is daily, weekly, and monthly overcoming. Obstacles, difficulties that come along our way. And I want to lay the intro and then I will go to the preaching based on 1 Samuel 17. I can be an overcomer in Christ. John 5 verse 5, it says, Who is it that overcomes the world? The one who believes. Everybody say, the one who believes. One more time, the one who believes. That Jesus is the Son of God. Every one of us here, the Bible tells us that we can be overcomer because we believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God, living within us as our God and Savior. John 16, 33 says, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble. But take heart, I have overcome the world. Because Jesus has overcame the world and all the suffering and all the persecution and all the diseases and sicknesses and all the difficulty that this world faces. He has overcame it all. And because He lives in us, that's why just now we say in John that He is, He is an overcomer if He believes in Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. And all say, Amen. You know, there is a difference between conqueror and overcomer. A conqueror is a person who conquers a place, an event, or people group, or things. But an overcomer is one who succeeds in defeating or dealing with a problem, a struggle, a difficulty, a threat, even danger. He's over, able to overcome. Is different things altogether. Matthew 24 verse 13 says, Jesus encouraged those who follow Him to stand firm to the end. He says, stand firm to the end. Hebrews 3 verse 14 says, we have come to share in Christ if indeed we hold our original conviction to the very end. What is the original conviction? <coughs> Jesus had died for the sin of the world. He was crucified. He was buried and He rose again on the third day. What is the conviction that we hold on to? Because He was an overcomer, He is still the overcomer. Number three, because He lived in us and we believe in Him. Amen? Because He lived in us, we believe in Him, we can be an overcomer. That's our conviction. Hold on to it to the end. We are not defeated foe. The question I ask you this morning is this. Are you an overcomer? Or are you constantly being overcome by something or by someone? Hmm? Are you constantly being overcome by something or someone? You know, church, listen here for a while. Satan wants nothing more than to be an overcomer in our, a person's life. The devil wants to overcome every one of our lives and all the lives of the people on the face of this earth. He can use a person, 
He can use a situation. He can use an addiction. He can use an illness. He can use an emotional or a temptation or even a pandemic or even a hurt that come that exists or happen in your life because of relationships. Satan especially enjoys overcoming a Christian. Why? <coughs> Because in overcoming, He can push us away from God. One more time. Satan especially enjoys overcoming a Christian's life. Because in overcoming us, He has pushed us or He can push us away from Jesus Christ. That's why a lot of people allow things in their life to overcome them pushing them away from God, stopping them from praying, stopping them from reading the Bible, stopping them from coming to church, stopping them from making right, stopping them from worshipping God. If your heart and my heart is hurt, you don't deal with it. We became over, we, we, we are then overcome. We submit to the enemy over our lives. We became a defeated foe. How can I become an overcomer in time such as this? We will look at one of the most familiar stories written about David in the Bible, the story of David and Goliath. I will skip through a lot in the scriptures, but I want you to follow me. The story goes something like this. The Philistines assembled their forces on one hill and saw and his army assembled on another hill with a valley between them, two hills and a valley. The Philistines were there to wage war against Israel. Each day, the Philistines' champion called Goliath would walk down to the valley and shout to the sight of the Israel, of Israelites and King Saul and said, challenge us, bring someone, send someone to fight me. He wanted one man to come from the Israel forces <coughs> to fight him. Whoever the victor would take the entire prize, that is, the defeated enemy or the defeated army will submit and serve the winner. I want to read with you, then I'm going to pray. 1 Samuel 17 verses 8 to 9 says, Goliath stood and shouted to the ranks of Israel, Why do you come out and line up for battle? Am I not a Philistine and are you not the servants of Saul? Choose a man and have him come down to me. If he is able to fight and kill me, we will become your subjects. But if I overcome him and kill him, you will become our subjects and serve us. 1 Samuel 17 verse 11 says, On hearing the Philistines' words, Saul and all Israel were dismayed and terrified. They were dismayed and terrified. Father, we pray that you speak to us this morning in your word. Let our hearts be open, our mind be open, our spirit be receptive to what the Spirit of God is saying to the church today. Saying to all of us today, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You know what is said <clears throat> about these scriptures that we read? The Saul at this particular time, Saul at this particular time in his reign had fallen away from God and relied upon his wealth, his power, and his army. But in this situation, he was overcame with fear. He was terrified. He was dismayed when he looked at Goliath, so huge, so big. And he was terrified. He was so frightened by the look, by what he heard. All sorts of things went through his mind. And the Bible says this went on every day for 40 days. Every day for 40 days. <coughs> three things you and I need to take note of. Everybody remember these three things. Will cause you and I to become a victim. Will cause you and I to be a failure. One, what you see. Two, 
what you hear. Three, what you allow your mind to think on. What you see, what you hear, and what you allow your mind to think about or dwell on, will decide in time to come when difficult trials and struggles and persecution comes along your way, will decide for you already whether you will going to be an overcomer or you are going to be a failure and a victim and be overcome. Are you with me? There's so many things that we see that's happening around us. There's so many news that we hear, heard around us, isn't it? And whether you and I like it or not, in the stillness, in the quietness of the day, our mind wonders. Our mind think and we think and we think and we think over what is happening around the world today. And we see something happening. And we heard another case happen. You know what? That's where the devil zero in to take charge of our thought life. The devil shoots flaming arrow. Where did he shoot? Not physically into our mind. Whatever you see, whatever you hear, every thought that you and I receive into our mind, you know what exists in our mind? He play with those thoughts. Those are areas that he shoot his arrows. Are you with me? Church, three things you must take care of. What you see, what you hear, and what you think. Or where your focus of your mind is. And sometimes, you know what, we don't care. We keep on reading bad news, reading bad news, reading bad news. I know the cases is rising. Hearing bad news, hearing bad news, listening bad news, looking at bad news, and our mind thinking about bad things. You know what, let me cut the story here. Then David entered the picture. David's father sent David to the army of Saul with food for his three children. Or three sons who were fighting with Saul against the Philistines. David found his brothers and asked about their well-being. It was then that Goliath went down into the valley to again challenge the Israelites. Read with me if you may. 1 Samuel 17 verse 26. David asked the man standing near him, what will be done for the man who kills this Philistine and removes this disgrace from Israel? He did not say him. He said, remove the disgrace from Israel. Who are those people? God's chosen people. Who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? He said, who is this? All the bad news, all the bad people, all the struggle. Going to foil the plan of God in every one of our lives. You know what news got back to Saul? Saul sent for David. 1 Samuel 17 verse 32. David said to Saul, Let no one lose heart on account of this Philistine. Your servant will go and fight him. To make a long story short, you know like I said to you, we're cutting all the services shorter. Saul questioned David's ability to fight this giant for David was only a young man. Young men in those days ranged between 15 to 28. Young men. So those of you 28, you are young men. David told Saul of his killing of the lion and the bear. The testimony of what he saw and what he heard and what his mind said is so big. But my God is able to help me to overcome. He never allowed the mind to dwell too much on the negative. He never allowed his mind to be subdued to the bigness of the opposition, the, the bigness of the struggle, the difficulties that is in front of him. He did not give room to the mind to ponder on, on and on and on and on and on. He saw, he heard. He called, asked God, God, the bear and the lions are coming. He said, with your help, 
I'm going to tear them apart. He did not kill them with a sword or a spear. He pulled them apart from their mouth and tore them into pieces with the strength of the Lord. We all know what happened next, right? In the story of Goliath, the Bible tells us Saul allowed David to fight Goliath. And the story is that he defeated the shepherd boy, defeated Goliath, the champion of the Philistine, with a single stone. Lessons to learn to be an overcomer. Why was this young man named David able to overcome the Philistine giant? Remember this one thing. Before I go into five things I'm going to share with you today, very quickly, that is this. David trusted in the God of Israel. David trusted in the God of Israel. Now, these are a few things you need to take note of. What you see, what you hear, what you think is very, very important. You got it? And the basis of landing all this upon is God. You must be able to trust your God. If He has delivered you last time, He can deliver you today. If He can deliver David from the lion and the bear, He can deliver David today, even in front of the Goliath. Don't allow what you see and what you hear and the thoughts that the enemy put in your mind to frighten you. Act quick and deal with it. Time waits for no one. It comes and it goes. <laughs> there are several reasons why David was an overcomer apart from the taking care of what he sees and what he hears and what he thinks. Apart from laying it on the foundation that his God is a good God and a big God and he can trust in him with his life. There are five things I want to share with you very quickly today. Can you follow me? One, David did not allow himself to be discouraged by the naysayers. David did not allow himself to be discouraged by the naysayers. Who are the naysayers? They are people who criticize, object, and oppose everything in your life. There are the people who will tell bad things about you. The people who will say, you cannot, you cannot, you cannot, you are not able to. They are the naysayers. Discouraging words come to you and I by those closest to you and I. Your family, your friends, your fellow believers, uh, your colleagues, your business partner. David's brother, the king, both were discouragers. When he came to his brother, he heard Goliath shouting as usual in the morning and he said, Brothers, who is this guy? You know what? They criticize him. They judge him. David and the, David's brother and the king both were discourager, the discourager. You know, a lot of people around us just want to discourage you and I. Just want to disapprove of you and I. Just want to say, things about you and I. You cannot, you will not be able to, you will fail. Don't go. You will be infected. Those who doubt you, listen, those who doubt you can be those closest to you. Don't allow the negative feelings of others dissuade you from your goal and your objective and your trust in the Lord. Don't allow people discouraging you to dissuade you, push you away from trusting God, push you away from believing God, push you away from following Jesus, push you away from doing what you need to do in life for yourself. Push you away from achieving God's plan and purpose for your life. Those that are trying to dissuade you are often those who do not have the courage. Let me one more time. Those that are trying to dissuade you, discourage you, are those who are often people who do not have the courage to go after the same goal in their lives. If they can discourage you, I got one more person with me. Yeah, you see, he also agree with me. Oh, look at him, he also agree with me. Look at him, he also, she also agree with me. 
because you know why? They have not have the guts. So they want to have more people to listen to them. You want to do big things for God? You listen to small-minded people? You will not be able to move forward. Are you with me? You will not be able to move forward. Note this, the only one that needs to be listened to is God. The only one that needs to be listened to is God. Number two, to keep yourself online to obtain your goal, you must focus on God. To keep yourself online to obtain your goal, you must focus on God. You can find this in 1 Samuel 17, verses 45 to 47. Let's not read, but let's listen to me. David did not see the giant standing in front of him in his life because his focus was on the God who was over his life. One more time. Was not the giant standing right in front of David? Yes or not? Yes. But his focus was not on the giant. His focus was on the God who is over his life. He said, you come to me with spears and sword and javelin. But you know what? I come to you in the name of the Lord. Amen. You despise the God of Israel. You despise my God. You think you are big, you are well trained, you are dynamic. But you know what? My God is bigger. My God is greater. David did not comment on the size and the strength of Goliath or the weapons that Goliath carried. There are hundreds and hundreds of pounds he'd been carrying. He did not dwell on these things because he gave most of his thoughts to God. You saw that? He gave most of his thoughts to God. He did not dwell in it. Oh, so big, so big, so difficult. He spoke to Goliath about God. He spoke to Goliath what God is going to do to him. He spoke to Goliath how God is going to overcome him through him to David. Not about the attributes, not about, about the bigness, not about the well-trained uh, ability of Goliath. David knew that his God was much bigger than any Goliath. He knew this. Are you with me? Are you with me? When opposition comes, when struggle comes, and difficulty comes, when pandemic comes, hey, don't let the pandemic, as long as we are allowed to congregate, congregate. As long as we are allowed to come to come together, we take all the necessary precautions we can. If the government say no, then we say no. Are you with me, church? Keep yourself online. To obtain your goal, you must focus on God. To keep yourself online with God, to walk forward, to achieve great things, and to still grow in the Lord and to be stronger in the Lord, you must focus on God. Number three, you also must ponder or think about your victories and successes, not on any failure or the possibility of failure. You got it? We must tell ourselves, we must ponder a thing about the testimony that God has blessed us with in our life. Through all the years we become Christian, through all the years I've been serving God, through all the years I've been coming to church, through all the years I've been involved with this and involved with that, you know what? I must think of it. All these years, God, hasn't God been faithful? He has been faithful. Hasn't God been good? He has been good. Hasn't God been the healer? He has been the healer. And He is still good. He is still the healer. He is still the provider. He is still in charge. You must ponder and think about your victory and successes in the past. How God has led you through. 1 Samuel 30, 17 verses 34 to 37 says, The Lord who rescued, delivered me from the paw of the lion and from the paw of the bear. He will deliver me from the hand of this Philistine. David, remember the bear. David, remember the lion. David, remember all these animals. They are big and huge. Which has, he had overcome. Listen, church. He did not say anything about what he did. 
when King Saul asked him and he gave the testimony of the goodness of God, he did not say anything about what he did, but what God did through him. But what God did through him, he overcame the bear and the lion because of God's strength in him. Hallelujah. Amen. Because of God, because of God's strength, because of God's ability, because of God's protection. Because God was with him. He says, I, I will face Goliath. I will overcome Goliath. Not with my strength. Not with my strength, David said. Not with the ability that I possess. But by the strength and through the strength of God of Israel. Amen. He said, you watch and see what my God can do to you. He did not say what I can do to you, but what my God can do to you. Remember your victories and who gave those victories to you. Amen. Remember your victories and who gave those victories to you. Who blessed you with those wonderful experiences, wonderful uh, uh, testimony in your time of struggle, in your time of sickness, in your time of failure. Who gave you those victory? God. God. Number four. To be an overcomer, you must face your situations head on. To be an overcomer, you must face your situation head on. You can find this in 1 Samuel 17, verses 48 to 50. The Bible tells us the story, David, most of us know. A problem that you turn, you know, a problem that you turn away from is still a problem. All agree with that or not? Any problem that you turn away from is still be problems. Hello? When you got a misunderstanding with someone, you don't settle with someone, it's still a problem. If you do not get up in the morning and pray because you are lazy, because you are tired, because you are weary, because you are fed up, it's still, you have not got up and prayed. It's still a problem. Are you with me? If you say, oh, you know, I've been serving for so many years. I don't want to serve anymore. You know what? It's still a problem. You are not serving. <laughs> a problem that you turn away from is still a problem. Remember this. David ran directly toward Goliath. What was David's problem at the time? A big, huge, nine foot, nine inch, just Goliath standing right in front of him. Was not that a problem? That was a problem. David did not look, did not hear the shout of the Goliath and did not let his mind wander off. So big, so small, I'm so small and he's so huge. You know what? The Bible tells me and tells us David confronted his problem. The Bible says he did not hide behind a rock or run around in circle. The Bible says he faced his problem directly with the confidence that God would deliver him. The Bible says if you want to overcome your problem, face them, run towards them and confront them. Wasn't that what David did? He ran. Goliath was stepped forward. He ran forward. He said, the faster I deal with him, the faster I accept him, the faster I'm free from this problem. The faster Israel will be delivered from this problem. I will run towards him. I will not walk and drag my feet. Don't forget your shield of righteousness which can be put out all fiery dots of the enemy. You will never be able to dodge your problem or hide from your problem, or escape your problem, or ignore your problem. Face them directly. Check your heart and know your heart. God, you know what? I'm frightened. God, I am afraid. God, you know what? I'm young in the Lord. The struggle and the pain in my life, the difficulties in my life come one after another. I'm afraid. But God, but your word assured me, your word tells me that you are with me. You will never leave me. You will not forsake me. You, 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 I'm afraid, but you know what? You help me to overcome the lion and the bear. You grant me the strength to tear them, tear them apart. You know, every time we face a struggle and a pain in our life, whether you and I admit it or not, sometimes I have a little bit of fear and 
a little bit of uncertainty within my heart. Right, Kana? We are still human, isn't it? But when we remember the goodness and the power and the wonder and the greatness and the bigness and the ability of my God in our life the last number of years, it somehow energizes faith within us to say, you know, if God has not abandoned me in the past, He will not abandon me today. If God has helped me in the past, God will help me today. Amen? Amen? That's what He can do. Face it head on. Yeah, directly with the righteousness given to God, with yourself within. I have trusted God. I have not failed God. I am faithful to God all these years. My God will not abandon me. He is still good to me. And all say, Amen. Number five, remember who you are fighting for. Remember who you are fighting for. This is the most important advice. 1 Samuel 17, 45 to 47 says, David said to the Philistine, You come against me with sword and spear and javelin, but I come against you in the name of the Lord Almighty, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defiled. All those gathering here will know that it is not by sword or spear that the Lord saved. For the battle is the Lord and He will give all you of you into my our hands. He said, you know what? I do not represent myself. I do not represent the army of Israel. I represent my God. How I trust, how I believe, how I fight, how I conquer, how I win is not me. It is God in me. It's God through me. Remember who you are fighting for. Do you want to become an overcomer rather than being overcome? Face your problems. Face your problems. Face your challenges. Face the battle of your life like David did. Face your challenges to bring honor to God and in His power. When you face the many challenges and fights, that are part of life. One more time. When you face the many challenges and fights of life that are part of your life and my life daily, weekly, monthly, remember this one thing. Remember the promises of God. 1 John 5, 4 says, For everyone born of God, a child of God, a born-again believer, a Christian overcomes the world. You can be an overcomer. This is the victory that has overcome the world. Even your faith, meaning that you put your faith in God, you put your trust in God. If you believe in your God, you can. You are able to be an overcomer. If you look to yourself, if you look to people around you, if you look at circumstances and situations, you look at what you don't have you will not be able to. 1 John 16, 33 says, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world will you have trouble. But take heart, I have overcome the world. John, uh, Romans 12, 21 says, Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Hallelujah. You know the song, Victory is ours. You can be an overcomer. Trust in God. He will deliver you and I and He will help you and I to be an overcomer. Remember three things. Plus the foundation. Whatever you see, whatever you hear, whatever you hear, uh, think. The three areas. Rest sit on the foundation that in God, I do trust. Amen. In God, I do trust. What I see, what I see, what I hear, what I think, I subject it under the promises of God. If that's what God says, that's what I will do. Amen. Amen. Are you with me, church? Hallelujah. Can I invite you to stand together with me? Are you ready to be an overcomer? Wave your hands. What are three areas you need to guard? 
Say it together with me. Your eyes, my eyes. Say it with my eyes, my ears, and my mind. How should I put it on? Who should I put it on? On the foundation of my God. I trust in my God. Amen. 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 Yeah. Let's sing this song as a. Uh, uh, Pastor Kendrick and uh, Abigail help us with this song. Oh Jesus, Your to as we rise up in worship. Oh, when trials unleash like a flood. Yes, Lord. The battle belongs to our God as He drives out in worship. Oh, say the victory is yours. The victory is yours. You're riding on the storm. Your name. Your name is such a name. The rise and fall your throne will stand it all your name is such a girl oh, one helmet to break me as fill amen now nothing will silence my praise I will cry out Worship. Oh, we cry to you. Come on, you sing the walls will break. The walls of the prison will shake. Yes, Lord. The chain breaking kings will rise to say as we ride out in worship. Oh, Lord, victory is in your name. Come on, you say, church. The victory. find this song amazing wonderful how it spell out to you and I David's experience with the lion and the bear David's experience with Goliath and later part in his life Goliath's five cousins five giants five more giants that came along the way he and the army of Israel and the general of Israel wouldn't have overcome the five giants if David didn't overcome the bear and the lion and Goliath now. Because they saw David. David was a good example. They all rose up to become warriors. It's not in me. It's not in our army. Victory is in our God. Amen. Victory is in our God. Watch what you see, what you hear, and what you think and focus on. Lay it on the foundation. My God is a good God. My God is a big God. My God is a powerful God. And I trust Him. 
and I trust Him. Even though all the things happening around me dissuade me, but I trust Him because He never failed me once. He had never failed me once. You know, we're going to sing this song one more time. Pastor Kendrick and the team of leaders. We'll make it a personal song. Victory is mine. Is mine in my life. And I'm going to overcome. Amen. Pastor Kendrick, for you. Let's rise up, as we rise up in worship. When trials and sufferings like a flood, oh, it belongs to you, Lord. The battle belongs to our God, as we rise up in worship. in our own space now take, make it where you are an altar before God to pray whatever the struggles the, the challenges and the difficulties and, and the confusion that you may be facing and going through right now sicknesses and diseases and hurts and disappointment in your life and, and all the negative things were thrown into your mind Remember this one thing. Say, God, I'm going to commit them to you. I'm going to watch what I see, what I hear, and what I think. I'm going to put it on the foundation of my God that I can trust Him. He's a good God. 
I want to remember all His promises. He has not failed me last time. He will not fail me today. Amen. Just take the 30 second where you are right now. Just take the 30 second right now where you are to pray. Amen, Jesus. Father, I'm going to ask right now, will you help us to guard what we see, what we hear, and what we are allowed to think? Control it, watch over it, submit it to the foundation of my God, that He is trustworthy. He is reliable. He has never failed us in the past. He will never fail us today and not even tomorrow. But Lord, for this meantime, we pray that you bless every one of us. Grant us the strength and the ability and the grace to rise on the storm and to be an overcomer in Christ Jesus who strengthens us. Bless all of us with a great and protect over every one of our lives. All this we pray and ask. In Jesus' name. And everyone say, give a hand to the Lord if you may. Our fight is with weapons unseen. Your enemies crash to this as we rise up and worship. And try What?